Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today I have some interesting news and uh, some testing that we're going to do that might make VR significantly clearer based on some other people's testing. We're going to see if it works today with the Pimax setup and uh, give you guys the instructions on how to test it for yourselves. Okay, so first off, I want to make sure that all the credit for this goes to the VR pilot. This was the channel, at least, that I saw it on. Check out Jose's channel. Really good guy. Really into uh, VR uh, flight simulation. Does almost all of his recordings in virtual reality. Make sure you guys check out his channel. It's really good content. Really well thought out. I really enjoy his stuff. Um, now, with that being said, let's talk about some of the, let's get some of the preliminaries out of the way to make sure we're all on the same page. So disclaimer, do not skip ahead, please. Um, this particular step that we're about to take has had mixed results. Some people it's done absolutely nothing for, some it's done amazing things for. Now, the other thing that I want to make sure we're talking about the same thing, we are not talking about frames per second here. This is not a change that is supposed to enhance the performance. It is supposed to enhance the clarity, okay, to make everything in the VR cockpit significantly easier to see, almost to a monitor level is what people are reporting. So we're going to be taking a look at what that looks like and whether or not this is impacting my particular system, which is the Pimax. Now I want to break down real quick how the Pimax works because there's actually three different pieces of software that are going to be impacted here. First off, we have the Pi tool, which is much like Oculus Home for those of you who, who have an Oculus. The thing is that the Pi tool must be launched in, for, in order for the VR system to work. Then it also uses Steam VR in order to connect to um, Microsoft Flight Simulator. So now we have two different sets. And then of course, obviously we have the Microsoft Flight Simulator settings itself. Now, if anyone knows of a way to bypass um, Steam VR for Microsoft Flight Simulator without the use of, uh, or uh, with the use of a Pimax headset, please let me know, because I would be really interested to try that out. I've wondered myself right from the get-go if there was a way to do that. Now, let's talk about what we're getting into and how things are going to look. Now, I don't record in VR, guys, so you're just going to have to listen to my beautiful voice and understand what I'm talking about. First off, in VR, um, one of the biggest drawbacks to flying in VR is simply the, um, the pixelization, right? Um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my RPM here. There we go. Let's get her cranked back up. There. In VR, everything is very pixelated, okay? It's a cool experience. You get that 3D perception. You can turn your head, look around. You get depth perception, which is crucial to any, I think, racing or um, flying game. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, if you can get the depth perception, you know, it just it changes the entire performance of everything that you're doing. Um, but everything can be really pixelated, um, meaning that you get what's called a screen door effect. Okay, you all remember as kids, you know, plastering your face up against the uh, the screen on your window, you know, trying to look outside, begging for the days, you know, to stop raining so you could go out and play with your friends or, you know, your parents to let you off grounding, in my case, because that happened more than once. Anyway, Vietnam flashback. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so you get that screen door effect, and it can make things very, very hard to see at a distance. For example, all these wordings, you know, all the, the titling here on the buttons and things like that would be very, very hard to read in VR at a distance. So you'd have to, like, zoom, you know, way in and boom, you know. And that zoom in works just fine, but it can take a lot of the immersion away. It really does. And then looking out to buildings and things like that, you know, when you're looking out in the distance in VR, a lot of the times you'll see, you know, uh, either pixelization, that same screen door effect, or you'll see like screen tearing or, or weird light artifacts on the ground, flickering, things of that nature, you know. So th those are all things that we deal with when we're in VR that can be sort of a uh, an immersion breaker or even sometimes in some situations it can just absolutely ruin the experience and you find yourself reverting back to monitor flight or 2D flight is what we what we'll identify that as. Um, 
so let's talk about what the change is. Okay, now I'm gonna reiterate one more time. This is not going to help FPS. If anything, some of you may lose a little FPS, but again, that is mixed results. There are people who have reported no loss in uh, FPS whatsoever. Um, and even some have reported some gain, but I, I'm not gonna even advertise the possibility of gain. I mean, yes, I, I just said some people have said they've gotten some, but I do not want you guys to hope for that because that just wouldn't make sense based on what this change is. So getting into the change, the meat and potatoes of this, what everyone's waiting to hear, um, and I'm sorry, I just had to get all that other information out, is we're gonna come to graphics and it's your render scaling. And PC, not the VR settings. So before we get into this and what the change is, understand before everyone starts asking nobody knows yet why this is even working on anybody's system because it doesn't make sense the change that we're making is in the pc settings meaning the 2d view our monitor view okay so the monitor view and settings should have no impact on the virtual reality headset and the settings that we're seeing in there Okay, you have a VR headset settings for a reason. These are the VR settings, okay? But what we're changing is PC settings and then switching into VR. Okay, so we're taking our render scaling and cranking it all the way up to 200%, okay? Or 200, whatever you want to call it. I'm assuming they're using percentages. Okay, and we're going to crank it up and then you hit apply and save. Now, one of the things that um, Jose said is if you don't see an initial result on this, to comp after you hit apply and save, completely close out of the simulator, trust me, it's just reloading it, um, completely close out of the sim and um, launch it again, okay? I would recommend that regardless. I always do things like that. Anytime you, you're talking about render scaling, okay, you, you want to refresh the drivers at that point. You want to refresh the video card uh, drivers because you've, you've just told it to do something completely different than what it was loaded to do, okay, um, which is very odd, okay? I mean, this whole thing is just very, very interesting. Now, you can see what I'm getting here. This is not lag in the video. My mouse is genuinely having this much trouble moving around, Okay. So let's go ahead and come back down here. But if I switch into VR, oh, helps if I start it. So I'm, I am now going to start my Pimax. There's the Pi tool. Oh, I got mad about something. It's because I didn't have it started. I hit the switch over first. So we have the Pi tool, and then like I said, I need to start Steam VR first. I've tried to run it natively, no matter what I do, Steam VR launches. And it's not that Steam VR is bad, it's just, you know, the more steps you can take out of a VR performance or, or a VR configuration, the better it's gonna get. I mean, there's just no changing that. All right, grabbing the headset. And now, we're going to come back into the sim. And I'm just going to hit resume for a minute. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm making sure that I left the whole double view thing up so that way you guys could see it. Um, I flew it around for quite a bit. And the reason why I did that off screen is because, you know, anytime that you're recording... Um, doesn't matter what service you're using, you're going to impact your FPS, you're going to impact your GPU performance, you know, all of that's going to be changed. So in order to get the accurate results, I had to make sure to fly around for a while without the recording going. Um, so coming to my conclusions right off the bat, there is a change. There is a change. Um, all of the buildings down below, down here, are just as crisp as crisp can be. The gauges, the three steam cages we have right here on the right side of the G36 here, um, are crystal clear. I can read everything on them perfectly fine. Um, now, moving forward as, as another oddity here is the LCD screens, I don't feel like changed very much, maybe a little bit, but I don't know how much of that is placebo from the rest of the effect. But yet, yeah, at the same token, all of the buttons here, all of the labels down here, are still very washed out. They're very hard to see for me. Now, 
as I said before, I'm dealing with a couple of different changes though, and I want you guys to make sure you understand this. I have the Pi tool, which is the Pimax software itself that has its own rendering settings inside of it. Then we hit connect through Steam VR, which has its own rendering settings inside of it. So some of this I may be able to change now based on the changes that have been made. I'm going to have to do some much further deep diving into clearing this up even further. So I want to make sure I get that out right out of the gate before I continue on with my analysis. So continuing on with the analysis here, here's what I'm going to tell you right off the bat. Again, there is definitely a change. Um, I don't know if my FPS has necessarily increased as much as something stabilized. I don't fly Microsoft Flight Simulator in VR very often because I get such broken performance throughout the flight. You know, um, we'll be flying around, you know, and all of a sudden just everything will be great. And then not two seconds later, and it can be in a desolate area where there isn't any population whatsoever, and everything just goes to crap. You know, I'm, I'm stuttering, I'm breaking, I'm framing left and right. You know, it gets really frustrating. So it's just like when I was like, all right, fine, I don't want to deal with it. So I typically avoid flying in VR, unfortunately. And um, the other thing that I typically see is if, if you guys have ever looked at a puzzle, right? You've ever made a puzzle or looked at a puzzle, um, you know, one of those kids' puzzles, you know, 5,000 piece puzzles, whatever. You always see the outlines, right? You know, each individual puzzle piece and, and, you know, you see the shape of it and how it was cut, even when it's all put together. That's sort of how I always see VR in the terrain. I always see, like, the individual squares, because that's all we're seeing. As we look out here, everything is a square, okay, rendered as a square pixel and then put together in a puzzle for us to enjoy in our viewing pleasure of Microsoft Flight Simulator, right? What I typically see in VR is I can see those individual puzzle pieces. I can see the outlines of each square. Um, and again, that's another immersion breaker. And that could be come across, some people will describe that as flickering or shimmering. Um, that's what I see. And I see it down on the terrain, typically. Um, I have seen one or two instances of it thus far as, as I've been flying around. Now, as I say that, I want you to understand this was something that prior to this setting, I saw 112% of the time. Okay, I always saw these lines. Um, and now I've only seen a couple here and there. There are certain locations where I picked them, like I just see one right there at the base of that mountain. Um, I know you guys cannot see it on the monitor, um, so I wanted you guys to have some sort of reference to what I was seeing. Um, again, I don't necessarily believe there is a frame rate increase. I think the frame rate has stabilized. Um, I have not seen... Oh, there was one. And this is why. Okay, so back up. I just stuttered but I'm recording. I was not stuttering, and I flew for about 15 minutes. I was not stuttering one bit um, while the recording was disabled, okay? Um, so please understand that any stuttering or lagging that you may see on the screen is happening because I am recording VR while rendering Microsoft Flight Simulator at an extremely high resolution. Um, but even as I look at all these houses, this is the most crisp I have ever seen and this is this is my hometown. This is Tucson. We're, we're flying where where I live, so I fly around here all the time. You know, I love flying around my home area. It's fun doing the VFR practice. And this is the most stable and most crisp I have ever seen it. Um, so it definitely did something for me. I am very very intrigued as to what is being affected because, for example, I can see pixelization on the top of the dashboard there. I can see, again, like I say, the washed out panels here in the cockpit. I can see sort of a glowing halo effect at the uh, white ring behind the knobs here, right? So you got that white ring behind there. I get a weird shimmering glowing effect. And yet looking out the window, I get none of it. Absolutely none of it. So whatever this is impacting, I think it is more, not limited to, but more terrain specific. Um, and I'm almost wondering, here is a very random thought. My thought would be, if the resolution, the render scale, is being impacted from monitor to VR, okay, so the PC settings that we changed it in, by cranking up that resolution, you're going to paint a much larger picture versus a bunch of smaller ones. This is a stretch, but my thing is, is that if, if we're laying down larger tiles, that could be why I'm not seeing as many of the little puzzle pieces I was telling you about, the shimmering. 
if it's rendering larger tiles, those images are going to be pre-rendered, which means we're not going to see as much of an impact in, in stuttering, FPS, things like that, as new scenery images load. That's a stretch, but that's the best I got. Why PC settings would still impact VR, that part doesn't make sense to me. And that could be an optimization issue on Microsoft's part, on the on Asobo, you know. And that's not a shot at them. That just could be something that maybe they weren't aware that was even happening. You know, they may not even be aware that, that this was an issue. Um, and this may lead them to find something really, really great for us for VR users. Um, they may be able to go, wow, this is crazy, but... This is what's happening. Hey, we can we can give these guys some amazing VR experience because of this discovery. But I mean, I can't stress enough, guys. And I've got live weather on. The clouds are set to high or, or you know um, ultra. I have live traffic on. Multiplayer is turned on. Everything. Um, so I'm gonna do one more test here, and we're just gonna bring it down. Um, because on the runways, typically when something weird will happen, um, please don't judge my flying here on this one. I'm not looking to, this is strictly for testing. So, you know, I don't have all of my controls set up the way I need to for this particular aircraft at this time. So we're just sort of going to go wing it and see like there's a little stuttering there as I see the throttle move. But again, nothing that I would complain about. My biggest thing is outside. Outside looks amazing. What's our airspeed? 114 knots? Anybody remember off the top of their head what the flap speed on this aircraft is? Someone's yelling at me right now. So there's flaps. And again, please no judgment. I am doing this just to find out how it performs on the runway. You know what? I don't even have my rudder pedals in front of me. I saw this and I was like, you know what? I was like, I got to find out if this is legit or not. Bear with me. All right. Ugh, okay. This is very uncomfortable, but I have my rudder pedals. We can turn the flight stick back on. Whoops. All right, so we are coming in for landing. And easy, even as I'm down low like this, no stuttering, no loss of performance. This isn't just a terrible approach. I got down this low on purpose because I wanted to see what would happen with the performance. And nothing, it's, it's behaving the same way it was when we were up at 4,000 feet. This is such a terrible approach. <laughs> I have shot this one right in the dark. There we go. Now, interestingly enough, as we're getting lower, so looking out towards the terminals, things are looking a little washed out. The runway looks very washed out. What are you doing, buddy? Like, I just now saw the numbers. So, that's interesting. I love the A320 landing with no landing gear on a very, very small runway, by the way. Alright, I'm just stopping the aircraft quickly so that way you guys can see. Alright, so like, out here... Looking out to the uh, middle of the runway here, like even this, so we got this taxi line here, and then this one here looks all watered out, washed out. Now what I'm wondering, I have the Rex uh, airport textures installed. I'm wondering if that's part of that problem. So I'm going to do some much more heavy testing with this. Um, but uh, definitely try this out, guys, because this, uh, this was an eye opener. An eye opener. This was a shocker that I was not expecting to see. I was not expecting these results. Um, so I'm going to be testing around with this a bit more, and we may do another video on this in the future, depending on what I find. But uh, I highly recommend that if you fly in VR, you give this a shot, because this, this may be a big banger. Um, Jose, the you know um, guy who uh, first posted the video that I saw about this, um, thank you, man. This is, this is great, and uh, I hope I relayed everything that you needed me to relay to the community. And 
Uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. It's fantastic stuff. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.